What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, the Olympia weekend is over, and, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't really feel like I missed out a whole much this weekend. Um, I got plenty of reports from the Expo saying that, like, the Expo was pretty lame. Like, people are actually pretty pissed about the fact that it was quiet. There were a lot of companies missing, like, a lot of big companies missing. As a matter of fact, some of the stars that they wanted to see weren't there, which is interesting. And, um, like, even Bang Energy. Now, Bang Energy is, like, Expo Kings. They love these fucking Expos. They did smaller expos like the Orlando, the Europa, Orlando Europa, but they're not going to do the Olympia, which is the biggest one of the year. Like something was up and, you know, the energy was down over there and people were just like, they were, they were pissed. They were like, yo, we came out here to see the carnival of bodybuilding. You know what I mean? The Super Bowl of bodybuilding. We came out here we were super disappointed. So I feel like I didn't miss anything, which is kind of interesting. Usually I'm really all about the Olympia. It's kind of my favorite show of the year. But that being said, you know, there's some changes that took place this weekend and a lot of people say that they, they were upset. They feel like so-and-so got robbed. You know, we're going to jump into it. We're going to go right through it. I think the um, the 212 division, I think the judges got it right. I mean, they called it exactly as I saw what was going on. Um, I do think that I, as far as bikini goes, there were some people that were upset because Angelica wound up placing third or whatever the case may be. This Issa girl, who I don't know much about, she's got almost like a flawless physique. So it was like that's the direction they want to go in. The flawless type of physique, like that proportions-wise, muscular, all that stuff. She's a pretty girl. And basically, you're just looking at who has the least flaws, pretty much, right? So if Angelica came in just a little bit soft here, and Issa had that little bit, then she wins, plain and simple. To me, I look at bikini as an athletic kind of look, but not super muscular. So that's kind of the look that we're taught as judges to go for, and I think that the judges nailed it. Now, what I do, I didn't really follow figure, to be totally honest with you. Um, I actually fell asleep during that, when that was on. And um, I want to talk about... Physique and classic physique right now. We're going to get to the men's open in a second or in a couple minutes. But so classic physique, there were some people that were like, Jerry, you know, they went with a taller guy. Some people were actually happy that they went with a taller guy. You know, other people were like, you know, so-and-so got robbed. This person got robbed. I was like, here's the deal. When I looked at the classic, uh, excuse me, the physique winner, the taller guy, I thought for sure, hands down, he looked like a more toned down version for physique. Over the last four or five years, the guys have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they came out with classic physique. So classic physique is supposed to be like a little bit bigger than physique, but physique is supposed to be more toned down. And nowadays, you put a physique competitor in a pair of posing trunks next to a classic physique, you can't tell them apart. They're the same size, they're just as big. There's no difference except for a pair of board shorts. And I was wondering, you know, how, you know, where is this gonna go? You're gonna let the, you can't let the classic physique guys get any bigger because they have weight classes and height classes together they gotta fit in. So they're locked there. So if these physique guys keep getting bigger and you keep rewarding that, they're going to be bigger than the classic physique guys. Like, that can't happen. So now, yes, a taller guy won it, but if you look at him, he doesn't carry the mass, even though he's a big guy because he's tall, right? If you put somebody in the same proportions that's 5'9", exactly the same proportions, you have somebody that's much downsized compared to um, Brandon Hendrickson, who won it last year. But it looks like they kind of toned it down a little bit, even though he's tall and he's heavier on the scale. His physique, when you look at him, if you don't know how tall he is, and you just look at him and take it for face value, he looks down like a little bit of a toned down version. He's still shredded, great proportions, but toned down, not having as much muscle as Brandon did. So I'm kind of looking at it going, okay, I get what the judges were doing. They're, they're making a statement. They're like, look, these guys showed up, and there's no high class in the pros. The taller guy had the look that we want to go for. And that's how it works. The, the Olympia, per se, is the show where they make the standard. They set the standard. That's the best in the world. So now, these guys that are getting really big for physique, the new standard is this guy, the new guy. I don't even know his name, to be honest with you. I I'm, I'm, haven't been following things very closely with physique since I stepped off the stage. But I looked at him and said, he's got a great physique. That's much more in line with what physique is supposed to be in there. It's not as much looking like a bodybuilder. So in my eyes, I'm like, the judges got it right. I think it's a great thing. They kind of moved in a different direction. It doesn't matter whether he's taller or shorter. It's a kind of a more of a streamlined look. And I think that's exactly where physique should be. Matter of fact, I think it should be streamlined even more to really make a difference between classic physique and physique. Because classic physique cannot evolve into bigger guys. The height and weight classes, unless they change that, which they're actually talking about, I feel like that could absolutely be a problem. Because as you start to change those weight classes, they start to fit heavier inside the same height classes. Now the guts and the, the, the crazy performance enhancing shit, like, synth, like all that stuff comes into play because now they, they, have, they have more room to grow inside those classes. My, my thing is keep those classes exactly where they are, make sure they can't outgrow those classes, and if they do, they have to go to open. That's it. That way there you have now a definitive place that defines what classic physique is. That way physique has a place because it can't be like that. Bodybuilding has a place because it can't be like that. It kind of keeps them in check 
if you keep classic physique where it's at. Now, talking, speaking about classic physique, moving on to that, a lot of people are pissed because they feel, and, and it, listen, if you're a fan of Breon's, I get it. You know, Dorian Yates fans, when he retired, were pissed. Ronnie's fans were pissed when he lost to Jay originally. You know, like, Jay's fans were pissed when he lost to Phil. Like, everybody's fans are going to be pissed when their, their person loses to someone else. But I looked at what was going on. As a matter of fact, I saw it pretty much dead tie until that final fucking pose. I watched Chris Bumstead and Breon go back and forth. And they are two different types of physiques. When they turn around to the back, Breon has lats that insert a lot lower. Chris has those higher lats, very reminiscent of somebody like Dennis Wolf or Dennis James with the higher lats, which is nothing he can do about. That mid back is not gonna fill in like Breon. It doesn't matter what the fuck he does. The muscle is just not inserted there. So he's got a space in his mid to lower back that is just gonna be like that, right? Take that aside. You know, you're looking at Breon, when he hits his front double bicep, I think that front double bicep, honestly, is the most probably the most perfect front double bicep that anyone's hitting anywhere right now. That's just my personal opinion. I feel like it's an absolutely flawless pose for him. But if you go pose for pose with Chris and Breon, they were both conditioned. There were, there were places that Breon was more conditioned than Chris. Like in his when he turned to the side, his hamstrings and legs and the lines in his legs were much deeper than Chris's. But Chris, you could see striations in his glutes from the side. So it was like, you know, in that pose, you're looking and go, well, who's in better shape? Like, you know, when they turn around, they both had striated glutes. You know what I mean? Chris had kind of feathering, which is a genetic thing. And Breon had the dark slices in his glutes, which is genetic. Like you can't, they're not training for that. It's just how it is. So I'm watching these pose for pose for pose, and I'm like, shit, this is actually close. And when it finally came down to it, they do that, you know, your favorite most muscular pose. And I'm like, you can't compare to that. Unless they hit the same exact pose, there's no comparison. It's a tie right now. Fuck. So Breon hit the, the most muscular. It was like the Arnold pose, like to the side with your arm like this, with the shoulder out. I noticed he wasn't pushing his shoulder out. He was kind of in like this, right? Well, Arnold, if you remember in Pumping Iron, he said, you know, don't pose like this, pose like this, like bring it out. I honestly feel like if Brian had pulled himself out and really moved that shoulder out, he would open up his chest and his his shoulders and maybe look a little bit bigger because Chris really beat him on size in that pose. It wasn't necessarily symmetry because you couldn't compare. We already knew he was shredded. It was two different poses. Chris looked like he just fucking dwarfed him in that pose and Chris was lean. So now you have someone that go, oh, Chris is fucking bigger. He's just as shredded. Chris fucking wins that pose, done. You know, the ab and thigh pose thought I too, that I thought too, where Breon does his ab and thigh, he puts his hands like low and scrunches down. Chris had his hands up high. And when you have your hands up high and you flex that bicep up here, right? You can see the bicep up here. When you're doing this, the bicep goes away. But when you have your arms up high and you flex that bicep, when you hit it, it gives more of an accentuated V taper and you see the bicep on the top too as opposed to having it down low, hitting it like scrunching down. So it makes Chris look even bigger and shredded than Chris did the abs, the vacuum side, like he was, he was, he was doing things that Brian wasn't doing. Like it was like he was trying to pull out all the stops, which is like to me it appeared on stage like he wanted it more, and that's not necessarily the case, right? Because Brian's a returning champion. I'm not gonna say anybody wanted it more than anywhere else, but it's those little things. Like there's poses that you can sneak in during uh, a, a, a not a pose down, but a comparisons. Like you hit a front double bicep, people sneak the, the crucifix pose and they hit the crucifix first, then hit their front double bicep. You're sneaking poses in. Lavroni was famous for doing a side chest. He would hit that side crab shot and use his bicep and tricep and then hit his, his side pose. There's ways to do it. And Brianna was hitting his poses great, but I think Chris just kind of out polished him a little bit in some of the poses. He was a bigger guy, taller, wider. I think Brian's muscle bellies, of course, are just inserted a different way. He's got a much fuller flowing physique. Chris never looks that full, but he's hard. Like, I feel like Chris has some room to grow into his physique still. Like, he can put on another, I don't know what his weight's at, but if he put on another five or six pounds of lean tissue, he would be much fuller, and he, I think he would have the same type of size-wise on his frame if you looked at him separately from Brian that Brian carries now with those flowing muscle bellies and the little joints and stuff. So I think, again, the judges got it right. I think that physique is going in that direction. They want people that are big but not too big, have an accentuated waist, you know, has the small joints and stuff. And Chris fits that, that criteria perfectly, so does Breon. Chris just basically outclassed him in a few poses, posed a little bit better, and then chose a pose that really clearly in that your favorite most muscular pose really highlighted his physique. And Breon, when he hit that pose, like I said, he was scrunched up. And I'm, oh, I just kept thinking back to that Franco in, um, in, uh, in Arnold thing. Oh, not in Arnold, uh, not Franco, excuse me. Arnold teaching that little guy that was in the gym and pumping iron to pose. Where the guy said, he goes, oh, I like this one here. And the guy posed with his hand like this. He was like this. Arnold kept telling him to, to open up. I kept thinking that over and over again when I saw that pose. I was like, shit, I don't, you know, I don't think they're going to mark him down. But 
Chris just looks so much bigger and he's he's lean. So it could have been the mustache though. It could have been Chris's mustache that won the whole fucking thing for him, which I thought was pretty cool that he he kept it on stage. But um, overall, Chris is a nice guy. I think it'll be a great ambassador. Um, I love Brian's physique. I love Brian as a person. He's a super nice guy. He's of course dating my friend Danny Phelps, who like I mean I adore Danny and Brian is just fucking badass. So. It's gonna suck, you know, to take that loss. But I saw some stuff afterwards where Brian looked like he was in good spirits, and they were out at the buffet and eating and stuff like that. And he looked, he was smiling and stuff. So he wasn't taking it like you know, um, like a poor sport. Like he took it like a champ. And I'd also liked when you saw, um, you know, Chris and Brian in the comparisons. They were with George Bull, Pre George the Bull Prep or something like that is his last name. When um, when they were done with their comparisons, they walked off and Chris put his hand on his shoulder and they were laughing and joking. Like there was some camaraderie. There was some good sportsmanship going on. And I'm like, you know what, I, I like to see that. So overall, I think that the judges got it right. I think it was good for classic physique. I think that that's the direction they're moving in. They want a little bit bigger guy, and they want to make sure these guys are hitting those poses right. Remember, these classic physique poses are harder to hit than the regular mandatory front double biceps. They have twists and turns, and like Gary Uded always says, you can create lines with those poses, and they're harder to do than the regular poses. So I think that um, over time, we're going to see these guys, especially after something like this, when you see that you know, the Olympia was basically won or lost on how you pose because they were so close. Posing makes a difference and we can't stress that enough. Now, getting into the open, here's the deal guys. I picked all top five, if you go back and look at the video from Friday night, I picked all top five exact. I knew exactly how they'd come in barring the fact that someone came in more spectacular, like really made a big jump. Um, the one thing I noticed on Dexter, he looked tired. By Saturday, he looked tired. Now they're all tired, obviously. But I noticed on the left arm, when he hits his front double bicep, this is my left arm, his front double bicep where the tricep inserts over here, this tricep starts to insert further back here. Now, I don't know if that's from an injury. I don't know if it's like a problem with the tendon. I don't know if it's atrophy from a nerve problem or something like that. But it like it, it, to me, it kind of stood out, especially Saturday night. I think they tried to suck down a little bit more to come in a little tighter, not necessarily fuller. And to me, it showed that like you could see these things on Dexter, like his legs were down, that arm was a little wonky. And I'm not sure if that's the one that had, I think that's the one that he had the injury in supposedly. Some people play, blame synthol and stuff. But when you're seeing that tricep such atrophy, like that's not synthol. Synthol in your bicep doesn't make your tricep atrophy. So I think there is something going on with that arm. And a lot of these guys like to keep it a secret. They don't like to tell anybody because they don't want to make them think that, you know, they have a chink in their armor that they can just basically go out there and ex be exploited by the other competitors you know, to, to use that against them. So they keep their mouth shut and they go out there and then you see something you're like, what the fuck? And then it turns to a big thing. So we know that he had an arm injury in the past, but whatever the case may be. I thought Hadi, and here's the deal. A lot of people were like, you know, they were like, oh, Joe, you don't understand. You're fine. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. I called all top five exact. The day before it even got called, I called all top five because you guys were looking at pictures. Now the pictures that I saw online did not look like these athletes on the video. All right. The pictures online from several rows back with filters and shit on the cameras, that, these guys looked like fucking hard as rocks in the pictures. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, none of these guys were that hard in the video. The video was up close. It was like literally like two feet away from them. It was literally, you could see all the flaws in their body. You could see that none of them were super conditioned. Like, you could see it in the video, but not the picture. So, for those of you out there that are comparing pictures, forget the pictures. Go look at one of the videos. You can see when they move around, they turn. You can see the folds of skin happening and stuff. You can see the water. You can see when they walk, you can see the jiggling of the water and stuff between the skin on some of them. So it's important not to go by pictures that you see because those pictures, I'm telling you right now, they don't represent. I've always looked better in a picture than I have in a video, and I'm well aware of that. I'm just not the type of person to take the picture and be like, well, this is what I look like. I'm not. I look like the video. Like, if you think that looks good, cool. If you don't, cool. But I didn't look like this picture. This picture looks a lot better than I looked on fucking stage. So, you know, the pictures can be deceiving, but I thought that, um, you know, what was really, really fucking cool was... Uh, one really cool thing was William Bonac ditching his fucking trainer and taking second to the Olympia. Like, that is badass. It just goes to show you that now William, if he's doing it on his own, knows what the fuck he's doing, okay, because it's his highest placement so far. And a little fine-tuning, another year of working on his own, figuring out things on his own, he might take that spot next year. We don't know. But knowing that you don't necessarily need that coach that was he feels was soaking him for the money and stuff and just using him, and then he's got it on his own, that was pretty cool to see him be independent and still fucking crush it. That was badass. Hadi. Hadi is a different type of bodybuilder like he reminds me of i want to say a smaller marcus rule where he doesn't necessarily have the best shape but he's hard everywhere but he has in his back when he turns around people are like jerry yes a great back listen his back is fairly detailed his back is muscular but he lacks the thickness front to back of his back when he's and he's a wide guy when he hits that back double bicep he's wide but if you look at him next to brandon he lacks the thickness period that's all there is to it when he hits the front lats right from the front his delts have points in them 
That's the fucking oil. It's in both delts. I, he hits it. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, it's very apparent that there's oil in there. For me, I don't like that look. I've had it in my delts. I've seen other people with it. It looks fucking weird. It looks like tumors in your fucking shoulders that a lot of people are going to bitch and moan about, but it's the truth. I'm not going to fucking bullshit. I'm not going to lie. That's the oil in the shoulder, whether it's from site injecting or if it's from synthol, I don't know. But it, to me, it automatically, when you see Brandon's big full round delts, and there's no points and shit in them, like immediately it draws my attention to hotties and goes, what the fuck? All these other guys have round delts. Why does he have that fucking triangle delts? Like, what the fuck? It's, it's not a genetic thing. It's a fucking drug thing or it's a, an enhancement thing. So I looked at him and go, there's a few flaws in him right now. And I think if you come in, honestly, like maybe three or four pounds lighter, even though the guys were bigger, I think he would have taken out Bonac. I really think he would have taken out Bonac, but I don't think he would have taken Brandon. Brandon just overwhelmed him with size and Brandon was lean enough. So if you have size, symmetry, and muscularity, right? How do you have the muscularity? He didn't have the shape or the size. Brandon had the size and the shape. Two to one, Brandon wins. It's simple math. That's all there is to it. Now, when I saw Brandon come out at the finals, I did watch the finals and the posing routines, right? And I saw Brandon come out and the final pose down was very telling or the, the confirmation round was very telling. Brandon, you could see you could see him accepting that he was Mr. Olympia. Hadn't even been crowned yet, but he was Mr. Olympia. He fucking knew it. He felt it. He was making that shit happen. He was manifesting that shit from everything that he was. He was fucking doing shit like, like he was like, let's fucking bring it on. Let's go. Like, he was ready. He was ready. It was very reminiscent of Phil Heath. When Phil takes the stage, Phil knows. I'm Mr. Olympia. You have to knock me off. So I'm going to fucking act like Mr. Olympia until you fucking do. It was the same thing with Brandon. You could see his confidence building, right? And then, you know, the confirmation round is done. You can clearly tell Brandon he's going to win, right? The scoring is done. The pose down comes. The first thing I noticed, Brandon comes up, hits a shot. Everybody crowded him. They tried to get in front of him. They're elbowing each other. And he was like, fuck that. He took a step back. He turned his head to the side. And he fucking walked down the stage away from them. And as soon as they realized he was walking, there they go. They fucking chase him. He fucking hits a shot. They come, boom. And he fucking hits a shot. They hit shots. Oh, I'm trying to get... Now, fucking Brandon turns, takes a step back, turns it, goes the other way. He's using the whole fucking stage, and they're chasing him. He's making them chase him. He is controlling the situation. He's controlling the pose down. He is Mr. Olympia. He's not following. Now, other people are like, well, Jerry, they were trying to take it to him. They were pushing him. They were pushing him, trying to take it to him. They were following him. They were, like, fucking picking up breadcrumbs behind him because he was the fucking leader, and they knew it. He was the one to beat, and everybody on that stage knew it, including him. Which means that fucking, as he was fucking commanding that fucking respect back and forth, walking on the stage, and they were fucking following suit and following him, it was very apparent Brandon was fucking Mr. Olympia. And you know what? From the people that were on that stage, Brandon looked like Mr. Olympia. Period. He was fucking big. He had great shape. He was lean enough. He posed well. He had a fucking big ass smile on his face. He had a good attitude, like fucking bring it, like he wasn't being shitty to anybody. Him and Ruli were fucking hitting musculars together, like... He was having fun. He was all business at the same time. He put together the package that he needed to win. There was no fucking doubt in my mind from Friday night when they walked out and they started comparisons and said, he's fucking got it. All he has to do is just maintain that condition. Let everybody else fuck around and try to beat him. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, when you try to beat someone else and you're concentrating someone else, well, Brandon's bigger. I got to get bigger and fuller. Or he's going to beat me because of size. You wind up eating and fucking up and spilling over and looking like shit. Let's say Brandon was more muscular than somebody, right? They go, oh, well, Brandon's not more muscular. Fuck it. You know, I, he, I got him. I, I'm, I'm there with him on size. He's got better shape than me. I can't do anything about that. But I could beat him with muscularity. And they start popping diuretics and fucking doing stupid shit. They fucking shrink down. They flatten out. And then they fucking get back and look worse. So if you could make them fucking react to you and you stick to your fucking game plan and not even think about them. Don't think about anybody but you. You think about how you can improve you and not how anybody else looks around you. You walk in that night, you will fucking look your best. Everybody around you is going to look fucked up. That's exactly what happened. He did his fucking thing. Came in a little bit harder at the night show, than he, at the finals, than he did prejudging, which is good, right? It's always good, but he kept that fullness. Brandon did not flatten out. A lot of guys, when they start flexing, they flatten out. He didn't flatten out. He wasn't dripping water, so it really started to drip water out of him, which he wasn't super dry. And I'm sitting there going, this is it. It's game over. As soon as they started following him on stage, <clears throat> excuse me, I knew it was fucking lights out. And then to see him crown Mr. Olympia... You know, and I've only met Brandon, I've only met him once, I've talked to him a few times, and um, I remember talking to him at the, in Australia, we were, at, we were in Australia, it was the first time I met him, and uh, he was there with his beautiful wife, Brandy, and I remember them not even talking about bodybuilding, that was the best part, like I spoke to him and his wife about their daughter, their sons, like their soccer players, and their, their families, 
they're just a solid unit as a family together. And I'm like, that solid family unit, that support system, like Brandon, when he gave his speech, that she said, you know, they allowed me to go out there and concentrate. My wife allowed me to go out there and concentrate. My family has had to sacrifice, right? But his wife believed in him from day one, 19 years ago. Or was it 17 years ago? They've been together for like 17 to 19 years or something like that. But she said, you should be a bodybuilder. He wasn't even a bodybuilder back then. I think she was competing and he wasn't. And, um, you know, she saw that. And I think all of us saw the potential in Brandon when he was nicknamed the prodigy when he first came out. We saw the potential, right? We go, there's a potential with this guy. And then he kind of faded away for a little bit. And then he came back. And when he came back and started working over in Kuwait, you saw the fight. The oxygen gym, you saw the fucking changes, the changes, the changes. And unlike Ruli and Rami and these other guys, Brandon had those genetic structures that they didn't have. Brandon's always had the muscle bellies and he's always had that bone structure, right? You add those two things together. If you put enough muscle on those two things, you're going to get a very dominant individual. Now, he's Mr. Olympia, the best in the world. Now, a lot of people said, well, oh, Phil Heath showed up, he would have fucking won. If Kai Green showed up, he would have won. If Rami showed up, oh, Rami's not going to, even if he showed up, I don't think he would have won. But they didn't come to the show. That's all there is to it. Like, stop, like, what if, if this person, what if that? Phil's a friend of mine. He's dominant. He's fucking smokes everybody fucking every time he competes except for the last fucking year where he lost to Sean. That's it. He's dominant as fuck. So to say that he wouldn't be a fucking out there fucking smoking everybody again would be just ridiculous. But the point is, they decided not to do the show, so you can only compare who was there. It doesn't matter who didn't show up. It doesn't matter who sat home. It doesn't matter who thought about going. It matters who won up on that fucking stage on that day. And that day was Brandon's fucking day. And I want to just congratulate him publicly on his win that is well-deserved. I understand that he had to sacrifice a lot to get there, just like everybody else does. But I'll be honest with you, living in another country away from your family for the amount of time that he did to get to this, it's got to fucking wear on you. It's got to be one of those things where you're sitting there going... Like, I just want to see my family. Like, and, and he, you know, he, he dug down and he did it. So when you see somebody that puts up that much work and that much effort and it fucking pays off and now he's the number one bodybuilder in the world. He is the best bodybuilder in the entire fucking world and no one will ever be able to take that away from him ever, ever. That is fucking awesome. So the weekend is over and of course we didn't get to go out there because of the whole situation that happened with Brady, which he's doing awesome right now, which is, I'm just happy about that. And, um... Now I'm kind of looking forward to next year. I'm like, okay, well, here's the deal. Like, Sean Ronan will be reinstated next year. Phil Heath has had fucking one year off. He's going to have two full years off to get ready for that show if he decides to compete next year. Rami, Rami may be back next year. You know, who the fuck knows if Kai doesn't want to jump back in the ring. We got new guys that are turning pro now that, um, you know, may or may not wind up on that stage. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. I just, you know, this year I was not super excited going into it whatsoever. I wasn't looking forward to the actual show itself and stuff, and I found myself glued to the fucking computer screen here, wondering, well, I mean, let's say it's not those guys we normally know, but who the fuck's gonna win? Who's gonna nail it that day? You know what I mean? Who has enough balls to push themselves to the edge and fucking win? Who has enough in them, who has enough self-control in them to not overeat and overshoot? Who has enough self-control in them to not suck down so much and pull so much water that they fly out? Who has the tools that it takes to get the job done? You know what I mean? It's not just the physical tools. Brandon has all the physical tools, Somebody else may have had the mental tools, but he proved that he had everything lined up. And like I said, if you guys go back to the confirmation round leading right up to the pose on, you can see him going from Brandon Curry, pro, pro bodybuilder, IFE pro bodybuilder, to Brandon Curry, Mr. Olympia, step by step in the course of that half hour. You can see it. Like he's, he's like fucking starting to, like the Hulk, he's starting to grow bigger and bigger as Mr. Olympia. And by the time they fucking crowned him, it was like, you fucking knew it. So hopefully you guys had a great weekend if you went out there. If you guys watch at home like me and, you know, you were sitting there at 2.30 in the morning trying to figure out what's going on, you know, it, it was a good time. I'll be honest, it was a good time at home. You just kind of make the best of where you're at. And, you know, I had a good time watching it. And, uh, you know, I was excited for Brandon. I really was. I got a hard time going to sleep because I was actually excited for him for winning because I know what a great guy he is, what a great family he has, like everything he went through. I mean, it, it's badass to see the hard work pay off, you know, and not have somebody be like, well, they're just genetics and drugs and this and that. Like, look, dude. Genetics, drugs, it all has to play a role in that fucking hard work and sacrifice. And nobody could say you didn't sacrifice. So we're on to the next one, guys. Chime in down below and let me know what you guys think. So I know a lot of people think this person got robbed, that person got robbed. I honestly see everything the way it went, the way it was supposed to go. The judges saw what they saw. I saw what the judges saw. I understand it. Um, let me know down below what you guys think. BossyChang at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. BossyChang.com is the blog. It's the Olympia 2019 bicep. And we are out.